I stand in the presence. Well, today, there's a lot ending and a lot beginning. The teddy bear delivery is today. It is the Amesbury Village Nursing Home. And everyone is invited to attend. Brian Dozer will be leading the kids and adults in carols. And all of these bears and stuffed animals will be taken to them. Um, make sure you continue to give them a lot of love because that love will just go out and love all of the people in the nursing home as well. Oh, good. And it's 12.30, leaving from Youth Ed. Also, um, it's the last day for the community giving tree. First of all, I wanted to thank everybody for taking part in the, this. Um, would you believe every single gift was taken from that tree, every request? And um, there are a few gifts not back yet because sometimes, you know, they're late in the mail and that sort of thing. So um, what you can do is you can go out to the table out in hospitality. And if you have had a challenge getting the gift here today, there is a way um, to get it to us this week. And I'd also like to thank um, the people who ran this. Um, is Joyce Mooney are in here? Sometimes they're out, out there, but it's Magdalena. Joyce and Judy Wilkinson. Thank you. And the coat drive. That's a thanks to Mickey Lucia for heading this up. Today is the last day and the coats will be driven to the Burlington Coat Factory to help um, needy people. They'll be recycled. And um, if you wanna go through that bin one last time, remember we cleaned out the closet and we are recycling all the coats that were in the closet in the lost and found. And again, you can shop till you drop right in the bookstore. We have so many talented artists and craftsmen here, and I'm gonna ask them to stand if they are actually uh, selling something today. So um, Eric Walrzak, he is selling photography. Nice. <laughs> and Sherry Gaudette is holding something up. And Will, I don't know, she's, he's in the back. And I know I saw some beautiful crocheted hats out there. Right here. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> the mom. <laughs> and then Donna is, uh, Donna here, she is, there she is, she's standing. She sells beautiful jewelry. And Sue James, she is selling greenery today. Cool. And so, you know, after service, the bookstore is open if you'd like to do some holiday shopping. We also have a new member candidate meeting. This is today at noon in Shipley's office. If you are interested in becoming a member or maybe transferring from another Unity Church, or you're just interested and curious about what it is to be a member, then you can come to this meeting and Shipley will review the covenant and the application process. I will say um, Unity Basics is required as, as well as a prosperity course, but that's today at noon in Shipley's office. And now I'd like to ask Bill Free to come up, Director of Sacred Service. Go Bill. Namaste. Bought a new hat right over in the bookstore. Go <laughs> uh, Bell! Uh, we have this awesome uh, opportunity to serve uh, the Sacred Service Ministry as an assistant, uh, to uh, like uh, work with staff and also the team leaders. And if someone is interested, please see me. And uh, the contact for me is in the today's announcements and bulletins. Thank you so much. I love you all. And don't forget, Wednesday Evensong service with Shipley, and it's Evensong with Heart. And right now, I'll ask Jane to come up and talk about Saturday the 22nd, this, this coming Saturday. Stand in the presence. Amen. So this Saturday is birth 2012. It's finally arrived, December 22nd. 
It also happens to be my brother's birthday, which I just find fascinating. <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to have some activities here in the afternoon. From 12 to 2, the, our newly formed healing team is going to be in the transformation room, and they're available to do healing hands-on with permission, um, but either way, hands-on or hands-off. And that's in a, as a, on a drop-in basis. That's from 12 to 2, so please join us and take this opportunity to release any old patterns that aren't serving anymore. At 1 o'clock, um, we're going to start the live streaming of the, through the Birth 2012 um, website. And the first thing that we're going to tune into at 1 o'clock is they've been, well, let me back up a minute. Um, from noon on Friday, every two hours, they're doing a global alignment activation mo uh, activity. And they're um, going to be from different places all over the world. The 12th one, which will be at 1 o'clock our time, is from Unity Village. So it's going to be prayers from Unity starting in Unity Village, and then there'll be other ones from remote Unities around the world. So that's what we're going to start with. Um, at 2.30... Agape is starting a, a live broadcast, so we'll tune into that. At 3 o'clock is the Global Birth Moment, um, and it's going to be an hour of meditation and prayer worldwide. So we will be broadcasting that from 2.30 to 3, yes. I'm sorry, from 3 to 4. That's from 3 to 4. At 4 o'clock, there's a sing-along at Agape, and then at 4.15, we're going to start organizing for our flash mob that you've been hearing about. We're going to be going over to Market Square in Amesbury. Mara's going to be here at 4.30 to practice with everyone. <laughs> so we'll meet right here at 4.30, right in the sanctuary. Yes. We're going to be good. No. Fully we, joyous. That's all that's required. We will have plenty of really excellent people, and we need lots of other people to fill in. No, just bring fun. It'll be great. Yeah. Really, really. Yeah. It'll be great. Um, so we're, if you're not here for the streaming, we're ask, asking you to get here by 4.15 because we want to organize some carpooling to go over there. Then Maura will show up, we'll practice, and we'll take off immediately. So we should be over there around 5 o'clock, I think yeah. is what the plan is. And we'll do our thing there. And invite your friends and family. We need to get as many people as possible there so we can really have a presence and really have an impact on people. Oh, go tell it on the mom. <laughs> Woo. That'd be great. We have a little hand move, you know. <laughs> Pardon me? Um, well, often flash mobs are a surprise. Ours isn't. <laughs> so I, I think it's, I'll check on it. I asked that it be put out there, but I don't usually get on it, so I haven't checked. Um, okay, so that's the activities for this Saturday. Um, if you're really interested in all of this, uh, you can go to birth2012.com and there's an events um, button on there. You can click that and see what's going on from noon on, on the 21st all the way through. It's quite a schedule that they've pulled together and it's, it's very exciting as we approach this opportunity for a global shift. Okay, so that's that piece. Um, the next thing I want to talk about, you have in your announcements the Unity on the River wish list. We put this together because it's Christmas time. Um, we've had, our congregation has been extremely generous throughout the year, helping us with a variety of projects, which is the bottom half of the list, the wish list funded and completed in 2012. So these are things that are not put into our prosperity plan. They're over and above our operational expenses, and we so appreciate any, any support that we give on this um, and all the people that helped with the ones that we got done. The current wish list is there, and we know at the end of the year, oftentimes people are looking to make an extra donation of some sort for a tax deduction. Um, 
we just want to let you know what would really help us at this time. So there's a variety of things there. Poor podium lights, microwave for hospitality, which actually could be new or a decent used one. Um, a 40-inch monitor for hospitality so that we can stream the services out there and have a place for overflow as well as for a, a parents with children that are not real happy being in here. <laughs> they can go out and not miss the service. Um, a credenza for storage in the wing room when we did the remodel and um, made, created the transformation room. We took our storage room and turned it into a hallway and that whole plan included putting storage in each of the classrooms. So we're just, at this point, we're asking for um, the funds to do it in the wing room. Um, a new server for streaming, which just helps us continue to be better quality streaming and more sustainable in it. Uh, storage <coughs> shelves in the bookstore, by the bookstore bathrooms, and that's so we can clean out the coat closet and you'll have a place to hang coats. Um, and then two, per oh, and replacing the cabinet and the sink in hospitality. Um, I know those that work there know how bad, what bad condition that cabinet has become since we put the dishwasher in. Anyway, that's on here. And then two projectors with the highest uh, number of lumens, brightness that we can have, and also have a greater cooling factor so we don't have an overheating problem. That's what's on our list. So see me if you're interested in uh, donating anything to us, and thank you all thank so you. much. I'll just go over these really quickly so you know. Christmas Eve services, there are three. The 4 p.m. is a candlelight service. It's for children, family, families and children also 5.30 and 7. There is no service Christmas morning, and the office is closed from the 24th to the 29th. That's just for your information. If you try to call in, uh, the phones won't be answered. You'll get a recording. Burning Bowl service is Sunday, December 30th, and we'll talk more about that next week. And the White Stone is on New, New Year's Eve, December 31st. Thank you. We begin our sacred service today by lighting the third candle of Advent, the candle of love. Two. Yeah. 
invite you to take a deep breath and enter into this sacred time. As I read from 1 Corinthians. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profiteth me nothing. Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Love, the most powerful energy of the universe, and its center is right in our hearts. I invite you to put, place your hand on your heart for a moment. Just become aware of where your heart's energy is right in this now moment. Does it feel peaceful and calm? Or is there any upset, worry, doubt, or fear? If there's anything you'd like to release, I invite you to do so so that your heart may again be an open and responsive channel for the spirit of the living God. God is always talking to us through our hearts, through our emotions and our feelings. And therefore, we want to keep that space swept clean and open. We will be singing, do you hear what I hear? Well, we can hear when our hearts are open and available and ready. So bless your heart as a receptor of the Most High God. And so it is. Amen and amen. You may want to rise and sing. Thank you. 
when you're standing, right? Yeah. You know, you can take it out. Your hearts are more open to hear. I apologize for that. <laughs> that was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Unity on the River. We are a center of celebration. I'm Reverend Shipley Allenson. In the name of all that is transformational, all that represents oneness, all that is spirit-centered, all that is inspirational, and all that represents joy, and in the loving energy that is unity on the river, I welcome you this morning. So wonderful to see you this day of love. This is, we're going to have a love feast today. And the color of love, the spiritual power of love, is pink. So we have quite a bit of pink up here to radiate out love to you. So let's remember who we came here to be by saying our vision and our mission statements together. Centered in love, we joyously co-create a world of oneness, peace, and harmony. And our mission statement, we are a vibrant spiritual community that celebrates the presence in all and awakens humanity to its divinity. Yes. So I love that song, Do You Hear What I Hear? I saw a bumper sticker recently that was, it said it was from the uh, Heavenly Star Telephone Company. It was a message from God. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? You know, as Neil Donald Walsh says, God is always talking, but who's listening? And some of us hear words from God, but I think most of us hear God through our hearts, through our emotions, and through our feelings. God is always talking when we are open and responsive and we hear it with our hearts. So thank your heart once again for being such a good receptor, for being such a good listener. Say thank you heart for being such a good listener. Thank you heart for being such a good listener. Yes, all right, very good. So that's what we are going to talk about today. But let's take a few moments now to welcome anyone who is celebrating with us for the first time. If you would raise your hand so we can identify you. Oh, wonderful. Please know that we welcome all paths to God and we love having you here. If you keep your hand up, we will um, bring you a flower. And after the service today, someone will introduce themselves to you and take you to the welcome table and give you a um, welcome packet with a CD in it that tells you more about who we are. And we love having you here. You expand us. Let's welcome you. new friends. Thank you. And we'd like to take some time now to greet each other. And we invite you to see each other, to really look at each other and say, I see you. I see your possibilities. I see your promise. I see who you really are. I see you. Let's greet each other in love. Namaste. Please welcome the 
Unity Choir and Maura Lynch and Child of the po Poor. And what child is this?
Thank you. Woo! Unity Fire. And the boys. Yeah. Ah. Thank you. Mm, that one went to the heart. That's one of the most beautiful songs you do. Thank you all. Beautiful. Thank you. Mm. All right, I'm going to tell you a mushy story, so just bear with me because <laughs> it's mushy, but it expresses so clearly what I want to share today about love and the heart. So there was a man who was um, about 50 years old, and it was Christmas Eve, and he and his wife were just not feeling the Christmas spirit. You know, his children had grown up and left home, and they just weren't feeling it. They just didn't even feel like decorating that year. But he was lying in bed that night looking out his window, and the stars were bright, and there was one star that was brighter than the others. And it reminded him of a time when he was 15 years old. When he was 15, he lived with his family, his father and his mother, uh, on a farm and, and a bunch of young kids. And he was expected to get up very early every morning to um, go out and do chores with his father, which he hated. <laughs> so, you know, he, he knew that he loved his father, but he didn't know how much until one day when it was getting close to Christmas and he had a kind of awakening. It was as if the spirit said, do you hear me now? Do you hear me now? You know, God is always talking. It was actually as if, you know, like the angel comes to Mary and says, hail blessed one, fear not, for God is with you and you have found favor with God. And that is God's message to us always. It's the message of love. Hail, blessed one. You are favored of God. God has found favor with you, so fear not. But what he heard, this 15-year-old boy, was he heard his parents talking. And his father said to his mother, I hate to wake Rob up in the mornings. You know, he's growing so fast and he needs his sleep. And you should see how deeply he sleeps in the morning. I wish I could just manage on my own. And then he heard his mother said, well, you can't, Adam. He's not a baby anymore and he needs to take his part. And the father said, yes, but yeah, but I just wish I didn't have to wake him up. And when Rob heard this, it woke him up. It woke him up for the first time to the realization that his father loved him. He had never known that before, and his father had never said that to him. And so it came to Christmas Eve, and he was thinking, you know, his whole life had changed. Because all of a sudden he had the realization that he was loved, and he knew that he wanted to do everything and anything that he could for his father. But it was Christmas Eve, and he had only bought him a simple little gift. He said, I wished I'd had more time before Christmas to save up to get him a really good present. And he was lying in his bed, and he's looking out the window at the stars, and one star was brighter than the rest. And he remembered when he was a really little boy, and his father had told him the Christmas story, and how the wise men had followed that star. And when they found Jesus in the barn, they had brought their Christmas presents to him. And that gave him a divine idea. So he got the divine idea that he was going to wake up really early and go outside and do all the chores and then sneak back into bed. And when his father went out there, he would know that he had done it and he would know that he loved him. And so that's what he decided to do. And he woke up, at, you know, he decided that he was going to wake up a quarter of three. And you know how it is when you do this? You wake up every 20 minutes to check your clock. So he never really got any sleep. But a quarter of three, he got out of bed, slipped on his clothes, walked outside, making sure the boards didn't creak. He went outside and he did all the chores. He fed the cows who were looking at him like, why are you out here so early? You know? <laughs> He cleaned everything up, he went back, he snuck back, took off his clothes, got him, but just in time as his father started to stir, and his father came to his door and knocked on the door, Rob, we got to get up, I know it's Christmas, we have to do the chores anyway, and he, and he cried back. Oh, and, and you know, the other thing that I forgot to say, when he was doing his chores, he noticed how easy it was. You know, what had always been a chore before was now a present, a gift for his father who loved him, and it felt so different. 
So father, it's not, father's knocking on the door. Come on, Rob, we got to go. And he, and he said, okay, Dad. And then he kind of lay back, and he was kind of giggling in his bed and thinking, in a few minutes, he'll know. In a few minutes, he'll know. And he waited, for, it seemed like forever, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Finally, he hears his father coming upstairs. Rob, he goes, you thought you would fool me, didn't you? And Rob goes, it's Christmas, Dad. And he runs over and puts his arms around. He feels the father's arms around him. And he wants to tell him he loves him, but his heart is so full. He can't say a word. And his father says, that's the best Christmas present that anybody has ever given me. And his heart is just full to exploding. And then they go downstairs, and his heart is just expanded again in shyness and pride as the father tells the mother what he did and tells all, makes all the children listen while he tells them that Rob got up all by himself and did all the chores, and it was the best Christmas time, best person present he ever had. And so now it's back, and it's, he's 50 years old, and he's lying. He's looking at that star again, and he decides he needs to get up. And he goes upstairs, and he gets all the Christmas decorations. He goes outside. He brings in the tree that they had bought, and he decorates the whole tree. And he has a little diamond star that he had bought for his wife, and he hangs that on the tree. But he says to himself, the best present, really, that I can give my wife today is to tell her how much I love her. And he says, you know, love is still awake in me. And it was born that Christmas so many years ago when I knew my father loved me. And isn't it interesting that it takes love to awaken love? So I want to complete that passage from Corinthians. Love never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am also known. And now abideth faith, hope, and love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. <clears throat> love. So, I said it was mushy. <laughs> it was a mushy story. And it does express the power of love. Isn't it interesting that it takes love to awaken love? Love is the most powerful force in the universe. And we can, when we understand it and we use it in um, loving ways, we can shift the whole planet. We can shift the whole planet. There has been a lot of research done by the Foundation of Conscious Evolution, by the Global Coherence Initiative and the Institute of Heart Math studying the heart. And we have come to know that human beings are frequency holders. We are frequency holders. We we hold a vibration, a certain frequency, and that frequency radiates out from us. And through these very sensitive um, magnetometers, they have been able to measure the energy that radiates out from us, and especially from our hearts, as much as two feet. And it can be measured in other people and in animals. Isn't that interesting? That's validation that we walk around with an energy field and it can be measured. Now, I don't need a validation when I go see my horse. <laughs> if I have any kind of agenda or if I have any kind of negativity carrying around me, uh, you know, she picks it up immediately. Last Friday, I thought it was the last Friday, you know, last time probably we're going to have nice warm weather. I'm going to take her someplace. I'm going to go on an adventure. I took him to Woodsome Farm, her to Woodsome Farm. The people have been there. It's great big hills. She trailered perfectly both ways. She was, you know, we just had a ball because I was in a good space and I didn't have, we were just going to play. You know, our frequency affects others around the world. Um, Brian Swim, who is a cosmologist, and he, and he wrote the story of the universe with, um, uh, hmm Brian Perry, uh, Brian, forget it. <laughs> I'll remember by the end of the talk. Anyway, um, he says, nothing in this universe 
is now created without going through human consciousness. Do we, reali we realize, I say this again and again. We use God energy and it all goes through us, our consciousness, where our consciousness is. And so the world outside is simply reflecting the universal consciousness of humanity. That's a scary thing. But, and it just shows us that we have a huge, huge responsibility, a huge responsibility to take care of our energy field and to know that what we are radiating out is affecting not only the people around us, but it's the ripple effect, and it goes out, and it goes out, and it goes out. We can be ones who change the energy of our hearts and therefore create a different energy field in the world. Um, you know, the heart, um, scientists tell us, is actually a brain in itself, of itself. It has a, b a bunch of neurons in it that qualify as a brain. And the heart is the receptor of our emotions and our feelings. And so it takes our emotions and our feelings in, and it translates them and sends them to our brain. And the heart actually gives more messages to the brain than the brain gives to the heart. You know that? So our heart is a very important, vital tool for how we are living in the world. So these messages go from our emotions and our feelings into our brain, and then the brain translates, sends them out to all the other parts of our body. Brian Swim says the thing that we need, the universe, what the universe is demanding of, of humanity right now is synergy. You know, synergy is something that has occurred um, that's greater than the sum of the parts. So what I'm getting at is we have a responsibility to consciously create synergy. And when we do that with consciousness in a high vibration, we can help shift the energy field of the planet. So what I'm saying is energy comes into us or we give ourselves energy, feelings, emotions. We're going to talk about heart coherence in just a minute. That goes to our brain and then it goes to all the other parts of our body. If, that is, if our hearts are in a vibration of peace and gentleness and evenness and balance, then that goes to our brain and that goes to the rest of our body. Then we have the culmination, the synergy of all parts of our body that creates something higher, that create a higher vibration that radiates out into the world. So, we have work to do. We have work to do for heart coherence. Co you know, the uh, Global Coherence Institute initiative is, uh, has given a wonderful, wonderful practice, which I'll talk about later, to help us bring our hearts into coherence and therefore to create a more synergistic experience in the world. And I want to tell you what some of the benefits of doing this um, coherence practice. In heart, in heart coherence, we will experience optimal human well-being. We will have various systems in our bodies will be synchronized. We will be able to release stress, balance our thoughts, balance our emotions, balance our energy, have mental clarity, feel better fast anywhere. It's a very fast practice. You can do it in about a minute. A feeling of ease, inner harmony, more balance, heart rhythms. It facilitates our brain functions and therefore, we have more access to higher intelligence. Can you, can you see when we have everything in rhythm and everything is flowing together in sync, how we might be able to access higher intelligence? We are more open to the messages of the divine. Who doesn't want more intelligence? Anybody? Okay, I want to be a little smarter. Our life will be easier. We'll have clearer thinking. Our cognitive functions will be easier. We'll have more focus, more intuition. It will be easier for us to make decisions. We will perform our best. We'll be confident. It's like athletes that are going into the zone, right? Who doesn't want that? That 15-year-old boy, his life was changed. All of a sudden, his chores were fun because he was in heart coherence. He had an energy, a vibration of love in his heart.
When I went out with my horse last Friday, and we, you know, this is all hills. We galloped up these hills and then down. We galloped up these hills. My horse had so much fun, she never wanted to stop. And I was just giggling. The wind in my face, the tears in my eyes were blowing. And when I came back, it was so much easier to do my work. That was my own kind of co heart coherence. Do something fun. You know, I always thought you had to do the hard stuff first. And then, you know, then, but, but the truth is... When we do the stuff that's fun, we're in a different vibration. We're in a different energy field. And then it's easier for us to do the work that is ours to do. <coughs> um, oh, you know, this is, this is the really good news. When we create co coherence and a synergy in our being, we not only affect the people around us, but it goes out to the whole planet and ultimately perhaps even to the cosmos. Do you believe you can create a shift by feeling good? Yeah. By feeling good. All right, I have a couple of quotes that I want to read to you uh, from Charles Fillmore and from Ken Wilber. Just to affirm this, okay, these were written over 100 years ago before all this scientific knowledge came out. When love, the universal magnet, is brought into action in the consciousness of our race, it will change all our methods of supplying human, human wants. It will harmonize all the forces of nature and will dissolve the discords that now infest earth and air. The earth shall yet be made paradise by the power of love. That condition will begin to set in for each one just as soon as he develops the love nature in himself. All right. Love in divine mind is the idea of universal unity. In expression, love is the power that joins and binds in divine harmony, the universe, and everything in it. Among the faculties of the mind, love is pivotal. Its center of mentation in the body is the cardiac plexus. Cardiac plexus. The physical representation of love is the heart, the office of which is to equalize the circulation of the blood in the body. As the heart equalizes the life flow in the body, so love harmonizes the thoughts of the mind. Isn't that beautiful? And then Ken Wilber has one more. Certain patterns of invisible form will accompany the emergence of homo universalis, and we will know we're making the shift through the palpable intensification of the feeling of love. The feeling of love. You know, I believe that Mary in the Christmas story was one who represents a coherent heart. She was... Um, she was so pure, they said, angels ministered unto her. She was a pure and clear opening for God so that she could spiritually conceive the divine idea, homo, homo universalis, or the highest expression of humankind, the Christ essence, the perfect pattern of humankind. She always stayed in her heart, it seemed, from the stories that we have, no matter what was happening, no matter what was happening in her world, no matter what was happening to her son, she stayed in love and compassion. You know, they, in research, they have noted, they have been able to watch the waves, the waves that come out of our heart, and to see their patterns and how they are affected by love, by compassion, by gratitude. All of these emotions affect the energy field, the frequency that we release in our hearts. And so we come to gaze upon the occurrence of this week and what has occurred in Connecticut. An unspeakable grief and loss of children. You know, I felt it in this room when I came in this morning. And I felt the energy and the sorrow. And I just, I just can't even imagine. I can't even speak of the loss of a child. And... I need for us to remember that it is not something out there happening. We are all in this together. And we are creating the world out there. And the, the world out there is reflecting the universal consciousness. And could this be, and I do never want to depreciate the sorrow and the loss, but if we could step back far enough could the universe be giving us another wake-up call? When it's children, it goes right to the heart, doesn't it? And maybe that's what we need. Maybe that's what we need. Gun control? 
Do you think gun control is going to stop this kind of behavior? Will that get at the source? It goes further, goes further much deeper deeper into who we are and how we are being in the world and the wake up to the awareness of who we are this man did not know who he is I don't know what his illness is or but you know I have read and I heard on NPR this week people who do suicide bombings and terrorist acts are not doing it for a cause they're doing it because they want to be seen and they want to be loved that man I talked about last week and um, Tony, Tony Hicks, who killed Tariq Kamiza, he was in a gang. He was trying to, he was 14 years old, he was trying to prove himself. So often these acts come out of some need for being seen or validated in some way. Our work is very deep. Our work is very deep to get into the heart. If you don't think you matter, Think again. Think about the vibration that you are carrying with you. Tehar Deschardins said, One day, when we have mastered the energies of the tides, of gravity, of the sun, we will master for God the energies of love. And then for the second time in human history, we will have discovered fire. We will have discovered fire. Love. We are going to be doing the um, heart coherence practice during our meditation. So I won't go into it right now, but I'll go into it during our meditation because it's a, um, a wonderful, wonderful way of creating coherence and lifting up us, us into a new synergistic experience. But just know that you can do this heart coherence at any time. Whenever you're feeling stressed, driving along in the car, any time, and you can help to shift your heart into a new space, and so the vibration that radiates from you will be shifted. So we want to give you a little fire of the heart. If I could ask the ushers to get our baskets, we have a present for you. Oh, I forgot to bring mine. Ah, and it, it represents the radiating out of our heart light, of our heart energy. Can I have one so I can demonstrate? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, boy. Okay. Open up your package. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Ta -da. This was Serene Sarna's idea. <laughs> Wouldn't you know that she would have such a... Okay, I don't know how to make it work, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, wait. you got to pull out your little tab. Yep, that's it. Okay. There we go. Now, come on. Come on, baby. Yeah. <laughs> a radiating, coherent heart. Uh, please wear it in memory of the coherence of the heart that you are. So everybody take the time to find your heart. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Don't forget the choir and the and the band. We got them. Okay, good.
All right. Oops. Not the last one. All right, if you've got uh, your radiating heart, just touch it for a second and we're going to move into our time of meditation. <laughs> oh, I just, oh, hey, it does different things. Yeah, this time goes, and then if you move it, it does a different way. Look, yours is going blum, 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 blum. <laughs> All right, okay, we're going to forget about our hearts for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to do that. All right. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't really forget about your heart. <laughs> Join us. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. How still we see thee lie Above thy deep and dreamless sleep The silent stars go by I invite you to take a deep cleansing breath. Remove anything from your lap that might encumber you. Allow yourself to relax and let go. We are going to do the practice of heart coherence, bringing our hearts into coherence. I don't know where you placed your heart, but maybe you placed your blinky heart right over your heart. But at any rate, bring your attention to your heart, to your cardiac plexus. Perhaps put your hand on it to help focus your energies there. And as you take another deep breath, imagine that your breath is moving right into your heart, right into your heart space. It moves in and it moves out. All of your breath moving through the heart. <clears throat> All of your breath opening the heart. Ethvita. Be open. Allowing your heart to be an open space, an open channel for the spirit of the living God. And now we will <clears throat> invite in emotions that help to create coherence in our hearts. It's so very simple. And yet it takes diligence and practice. Bring to mind a time when you felt love. Or a time when you felt love. Or bring to mind someone you love, perhaps a baby, perhaps a pet, perhaps a partner. Bring something into your heart that resonates with that feeling of love and allow it to permeate through your whole heart. Your heart feels so expanded and full like that young boy, Rob, at 15, who wanted to tell his father that he loved him, but his heart was too full. The words could not be spoken. When have you felt that love? When has it filled your being? 
that message will go to your brain and therefore to all the other systems of your body. Your digestive system, your lymph system, all your systems. And all aspects of your being will come together in a synergistic expression. And you will be a radiating center of divine love, just like your little red heart. I invite you to take a moment to really be in that space of love. Take time now in the silence. From that place of love, I invite you into what they call heart lock-in. And heart lock-in is when we intentionally send that love out from us. We send that love out to our loved ones, our friends, and our family. We send that love out to all those who are participating in Birth 2012. We send that love out to someone that challenges our ability to love them. And now we send our love out to Newtown, Connecticut, and all the families who've experienced loss. We know the children <clears throat> that made their transition are fine. It is the families and the sorrow of those who have lost a loved one. Our light will be received. It comes from the depths of our hearts. Let it touch them and lift them and help them as they grieve. And now if you would like to hold in loving light to any individuals that are particular to you and that you would like to bless, I invite you to do so by speaking their names together out loud. We bless <coughs> excuse me, the prayers of this prayer box. We send our light. We know that these prayers do not return void. They are answered in right and perfect ways according to the Spirit. This Christmas season, the Christ is born in us. We remember long ago the little town of Bethlehem, but it's happening every day. And as we allow our hearts to expand in love and in coherence, we help others as well to birth the Christ in them.
of the Christ. Amen and amen. Wow. Um, <laughs> look around and see all these little blinky hearts. They're so cute. <laughs> Really. <laughs> so we are open to receive our love offerings and tithes, so gladly we rejoice in them. Before we do, I'd like to introduce the chaplains, if they would stand or raise their hands as they are able, so we can identify them. They are here for you in total confidentiality to know and remember the truth. All right. I don't think so. Let's hold our offerings in our hands and bless them, filling them with the love Resonance that is in this room as we say together the blessing of the tithes and offerings. Divine love, as me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive.
Oh, sweet spirit, so filled with love we are. This gathering of love and remembering, we send these offerings out filled with that love to do the will and the work of Holy Spirit. Thank you. Yeah. We have actually, I had forgotten, we have a testimony. Jackie Woodside, want to come up and testify? Tell us about your board experience. I stand in the presence. Namaste. Namaste. Uh, before I testify about being on the board of trustees, Shipley, that was an amazing talk today, and I don't think we acknowledged you for that. It was really <laughs> incredible. I travel and go to Unity churches all around the country, and you guys have no idea. I do believe we have the star of the Unity movement right here at Unity on the River. Um, so, how many of you like being at your best? Versus mediocre, versus, right? So, um, so I'm a racquetball player, and wh when do you think I'm at my best? Is it when I'm playing somebody who's kind of like quasi so not so great and I can kick their butt with my eyes closed? Or is it when I'm playing somebody who's a little bit better than me and raises me to a higher level? What does this have to do with a board of trustees? So if you like being at your best, you need to play a bigger game, right? If you like being at your best, you have to play a bigger game. So whenever I talk to people about being on the board of trustees, they say, oh, I don't know if I have time for that. Well, let me tell you, I'm not exactly sitting at home eating bonbons on the couch watching soap operas, <laughs> right? So if you're up to playing a big game and you're committed to something in life, like, isn't, aren't you at your best when you are aligned with doing something that you love to do, committed to something that's important to you? So why don't we have 130 applications for the Board of Trustees, right? So I really want you to look in your heart. My life has been incredibly transformed through my participation on the Board of Trustees. Uh, I began my work with the Board of Trustees about six years ago. I was off the board for a year, and now I'm back on the board again. Um, so I did six years on, a year and a half off, and now I'm back on. And six and a half, seven, eight years ago, I was not a mother. Uh, I was not married. I did not have a speaking and teaching business. I had not spoken at the Unity People's National Convention. I was not a published author. Um, so, and I really do credit a lot of what's transformed in me out of my commitment to living unity principles through my service on the Board of Trustees. So I invite all of you to look in your hearts and see if not there, then where are you going to be of service? But if you're really up for playing a big game, I invite you to come and play with us on the Board of Trustees. We're taking applications for the openings in February. Thank you. And I would like to invite Jane Cowan to come on up, because she has a core rock value, value rock. I stand in the presence. No, I say. <laughs> um, thank you. And Jackie, before you sit down, please come back up. <laughs> <laughs> so things really are in divine order. Because um, Jackie just basically proved to you why I am giving her the inspirational core value rock. <laughs> thank you. That was so perfect, and I know knew that I was going to get choked up doing this, so I really appreciate your help with that. So that is the essence of who Jackie is, and that is what is so inspirational to me, and I am giving her this core value rock. And I have some other updates. She went through a list of what she's done in the last seven or eight years being involved with the board and all. <laughs> Recently, <laughs> you do this. So she has, she has always, um, oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'm going to read some of this, because one of the things I love about Jackie is how clearly she communicates. And she sent out this email of, within the last month. I'm just, I apologize for reading, and I'm going to read. So that her, her, she's saying that her commitment has been to people living happy, thoughtful, and meaningful, and productive lives. That's true, she, that comes through every time she speaks here. Um, for many years, she's wanted to continue her expertise as a psychotherapist and her skills as a coach in, into one, combine those into one cohesive, holistically oriented wellness model. She has now had the opportunity, she's partnering with Portrait Health
to open the Woodside Wellness Institute for the tr treatment of depression and anxiety. <laughs> So I'm not going to say any more about that. You're, please, <laughs> please feel free to talk to Jackie to learn more. And she just told me before service started that she is going to be starting her coaching institute this year. So talk about living life fully. Yeah. Bless you. Go Jackie. Go Jackie. Today for our big song, it's the kids' pageant under the direction of Christina Mariah. <coughs> and it's going to be a great time. It's telling the story. And they will be singing Little Drummer Boy and Joy to the World. Ladies and gentlemen, Christina Mariah and the youth ministry. <laughs> Brian Dozer, too, has been a wonderful help getting the kids ready with their song. And I greatly appreciate Brian doing double duty at the board and with the kids. And yeah, look at me. I'm back there. There he is. <laughs> Go, Brian. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Each year at this time, we enjoy the opportunity to revisit the Christmas story. And this year, we have a special pageant with special program to celebrate the joys and blessings of this wonderful season. And we'd like to share this with you. Now it came to pass that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world be taxed. Joseph went out from Galilee to travel to the city of David to the town of Bethlehem to enroll himself in Mary, who was now great with her child. Mary brought forth her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In the field, shepherds attending their sheep were startled by a strange light. An angel appeared and told them, When the angel had said this, suddenly a great number of other angels appeared, all praising God and saying, When the angels had gone, the shepherds saw a great shining star over the town of Bethlehem. So the shepherds hurried off to discover Mary and Joseph and the baby. At the same time, three wise teachers came from the east. They knew from the prophets that a child was to be king among men, and they followed the light from the brightest star in the night sky. The star led them to Bethlehem, where they came upon the babe in the stable and fell to their knees bearing gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Even the lowliest brought gifts to give to baby Jesus. Come, they 
one new second. Beautiful. You all did so well. Thank you. Thank you. We are filled with the Christmas spirit. Anybody want to help me pray? All right. <laughs> okay, let's go and let's join in singing our peace song. <laughs> I got a whole crew. I got all the girls.
when you leave today, the next person you see say, Hail, blessed of God, the Lord is with you. Fear not, for you have found favor with God. And that is the truth. The light of God surrounds us. Yeah.